We have always dreamt of the freedom that comes with living on the road. Travelling with only the essentials, while not being tied down by time or any commitments. The idea to set up our vehicles for travelling was sparked on a shorter trip in the south. Jesus, One night is never enough, and with that, we started exploring the idea of a more extended journey. In our sights, a plan to make no plans, explore the less explored, and drift with the weather throughout the rugged South Island of New Zealand, or trying to stay off the sealed roads as much as possible. Joining me on this trip is avid outdoorsman Jamie and his artist wife Mars, outdoor photographer Andrew, and my partner Nikita. All of us sharing the same passion for adventure and discovering parts of New Zealand we haven't experienced. This is Finding South. Before starting the trip, we needed to make sure that the vehicles were fully equipped for the task. And after a visit to our friends at Felden Shelter, fitting fresh sets of Toyo tyres and crafting home-built storage, we felt much more prepared. We are ready to head south, testing some new gear before jumping islands on the ferry early the following morning. A few hours behind this morning, we got down to Wellington last night quite late and set up the tent on a friend's driveway. We were meant to be boarding this ferry at 7 o'clock, but it's now 9.15, two hours later than when we were supposed to leave. We're finally... Oh, shit! Keep going. Oh, we're finally on the road. So we've gone picked in off the ferry, found a nice little camp spot right by a river. Uh, we just set up the tents at camp. Being forced to take today a bit slower with the ferry being delayed, put everyone in a mood to basically get the essentials done, ready for the uh, next three week adventure. Is that the right setting? It's got a hammer setting on it. We have finally arrived. After spending a quiet first night in a roadside camp, the morning called for an early brew and some tender old truck love. We are pumped to get on the road today and let the Thais experience their first real taste of what is to come. Our first proper day off Tarsil, and we couldn't have asked for anything better. As we climbed into the mountains, gaining altitude, we were greeted with warm weather, blue skies, and a view as far as the eye could see. It's a bit of an unspoken rule that the toilet just always has the best view. It's not bad. I had been here once before, but the weather was howling last time. Today's a contrast to that. Perfect for a cooling dip. But of course, the first day always comes with its own challenges. I have this cord, which seems to be cut. So it just won't start? Nah. There's no power to the ignition. Making progress slowly. Hopefully we can get it to town. <sighs> Who would have thought it'd be the ranger? <laughs> Probably you. <laughs> Are you ready boys? Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. Good. Okay, we got it going. Good. We got it going. After searching for 45 minutes, luckily, a loose connection was all it was, and soon after, we carried on to find a camp. Arthur's Pass is a special place for Nikita and I. Our first trip together was here. Fire number four, day three. The only plan I had for the trip was in this area. No. By now, we had already spent so much time behind the wheel and all agreed to set up an early camp. We enjoy a good meal, a few cold ones, and celebrate the new memory we had made here today. Jesus, man. Somewhere up there is Joel and Jamie. Well, I can't see a bloody thing with how dusty these back roads are. How beautiful is that road? At this stage, we feel we are finding our rhythm. Days exploring, evenings reminiscing the day's adventure, and nights spent under the stars. Just message us when you get into service, we'll just stay around for like Yeah. Sweet. Cool. An eventful evening left us one vehicle down, with Jamie and Mars having to travel three hours to a hospital late in the night. After getting into service the following day and receiving their update, we made the call to push on, hopeful that we would see them again in a few days. We have broken today into two legs. Leg one taking us into vast alpine terrain to above 1600 metres. We had heard rumours that this track could take longer than expected, so although incredible, we just didn't have time on our side to fully explore. We know leg two ahead of us is slightly more challenging, anticipating to pop out in the deep south but completely unsure of what to expect. So we just finished the first part of leg two and we wanted to basically avoid the second half. Somehow we've ended up back on leg two. We've turned around and we're heading back because we do not have the time or the light to continue this route. Oh, we must be on the right track then. I'm wondering whether we just try and contact the station and yeah, just see like, worth trying to... and just be like, look, we're kind of a bit behind on our schedule and we're on your runs road at the moment we're, with roof tents. Can we just could we just camp somewhere quietly? The sun's almost going down. I think we're just going to move into higher and higher country. Yeah. And then it's just going to get windier by the looks of this. It uh, looks like we're heading into what could be some unpleasant weather. Um, just following the road for a little bit longer and seeing if we can find a couple of options. We're still trying to continue uh, to find a place for camp. Seems like we're getting higher, driving through some clouds at the moment. It's all a bit exciting. See where we end up. I'm locked out. <laughs> So we 
ended up pushing on through the night. Visibility went to almost nothing. We made it to this place, just surrounded by these empty huts. And we saw that there's one car here, so I just to uh, go door knocking. Probably the most welcoming people we could have been uh, able to meet. They just moved their car for us and uh, we just parked up, lakeside. We were thankful to find a sheltered place to stay out of the weather. Tensions were high after an exhausting 13 hours of driving yesterday. We have been out of phone reception now for the past few days and today we hope to rejoin with Jamie and Mars. We are stoked to see him pain free and smiling again a few hours later. We decide to head to Milford Sound, arguably the most scenic place in New Zealand, where our quick lunchtime brew ended up being a few hours distracted by the locals. We are now halfway through the trip and it feels like it's been all go for us. So we opt to take the next few days at a slower pace before our journey back north. We all enjoyed our time here. We made the most of the perfect weather window this place rarely sees, allowing us to show Jamie and Mars one of the hidden lakes Fjordan has to offer. And just warm enough for another alpine dip. With a storm brewing in the south and us hoping to avoid it, we head further north to spend a couple of days catching up with friends. Just out of reach from the rain, but unable to escape the wind. Oh, it's quite a good little deep wound. <laughs> Attempting to be a man. I'm trying not to vomit right now. Oh my god. After what was a pretty sleepless night from gale force westerlies shaking the tents, we were excited to get moving again. We head east over a mountain pass to try and shelter from what reports say should be the last night of it. It's going to be a windy night, I tell you. That should do the trick for the uh, wind tonight. Maybe. I hope so. After a better night's sleep, we are relieved that today the wind has died off a little. But the remains of the storm have made our route just a little bit more tricky. So what's going on Joel? We got the disco stuck. We were moving again after an easy winch job. However, the trucks definitely took a bit of a beating today. So missing three bolts, maybe four out of it. Especially the oldest of the group, when a gust of wind blew the door out of my hand. I went to open a gate, flung itself hard against itself. It's a little bit too It's at a right angle liking. now. How fast do you reckon the wind was going? Like 100 k's? It was pretty damn quick. It was probably gusting just over that maybe? Yeah. Character. Finally, the storm has passed, opening up an opportunity for us to explore some of the more remote backcountry valleys around the Southern Alps. to uh, go up the hill by camp and uh, get some shots basically of the area where we uh, spent the night. It's insane.
Sadly, we are coming to the end of the trip. Over the past few days, we have slowly traveled north and reconnected with the coastline. But as usual, a few more hurdles stand between us and arriving home. We managed to get two trucks stuck on the beach and to make matters worse, Nikita has been stung by a bee, something she is highly allergic to. Joel's just taking my ranger to, uh, to go to Blenheim Hospital. She's lost complete feeling in her arm now and looks as though she's probably going to pass out. With Nikita going downhill fast and the hospital still been over an hour away, I was told to pull over so help could arrive sooner. While the boys found a local hero to help get them off the beach. And we've made it out. Thanks to this legend. After a couple of hours getting off the beach, and fortunately, only a minor scare with the bee sting, we regrouped and spent our last and almost only wet day exploring the northern sounds. At this point, catching the ferry home was on our minds, but it feels like fortune just wasn't on our side. We're having coffee in the uh, Blue Bridge car park. Somehow I managed to book the wrong ferry. The next available ferry is in three weeks. We're just crossing our fingers really, hoping that, hoping that we can get on. You know what? Two thumbs up. With seven hours passed and watching two full ferries leave, Thankfully, space was available on the next. Look at it. Three magic tickets, baby. We f***ing made it. What a trip it has been. We have traveled to so many incredible places that diverse South Island has to offer. Enjoyed every moment of calling our vehicles home. Let's rock and shared so many new memories with each other. We hope this has inspired you to head out and find your own journey.